Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to talk about another showcase of Next.js 13 app. So we are going to build some Pokédex application where we can compare the Pokémon and store the voting results and then we will build another page where we can show all the Pokémon results based on the voting you have done. So I'm going to talk about like what all different aspects we are going to touch with this simple demo application. So we have app directory inside the app directory i'm going to have uh, let's say this is app and we do have a pages because i'm going to have api is also here and rest all we are going to have a server side component and the client side component so inside app uh, we'll have a couple of components so let's say inside app we have i'll just put those here and we are going to have a prisma because this is server side and we are going to have a prisma this is the postgres this is the prisma client and prisma orm this is prisma client with the help of that we are going to access the the queries and this is going to fetch the data from postgres and we will also see the different aspects of prisma like prisma data seed prisma schema how we define it prisma migration these all concepts also will you will familiar if you are not aware about how prisma works okay because we will have a uh, two tables one is to store the pokemons and another to store their votes and then there is a relationship because it's a sql table we are creating so inside app directory we have all those things like let's say page.tsx layout loading dot tsx and then let's say error dot tsx all these things are going to be here inside the root let me just make it a little bigger so we can see things properly now this is the the root route where we are going to show two different boxes this is how it's going to be pokemon one and pokemon 2 okay now you can see these are the server components okay i'll just move it a little bit up these both are i'm going to write inside a page.tsx which is a server component so if we talk about a simple server component then you can make a query to the database directly from here so i will be accessing the prisma client here so from prisma client i will just say okay give me two random pokemons and then all the pokemons the card and all the actions will happen at the client side component you get all the two different pokemons and then what we have is this is the client side components underneath that these both are server components and this is the client components there we can use the context apis and all okay so let's say this is the client components here we are going to create a, some other component and that component will do the voting okay so here is the difference because these are the server components they can access to the database directly they have an access because this is these are the server components but let's say when we are doing the voting there is a button you click on to that button and then then there is an, another component which is going to trigger this action of voting it's a it's a client only component client side component and here we want to vote for a particular pokemon so how that can happen from the client side component what we will do is we will just make an xhr request because we cannot make the link from here to there you don't have access to this so what we will do is there is another thing which we can do is from the pages we can build an api 
you can expose an API from here let's say the API v1 this API is let's say the votes this is the API endpoint you will create and from the client side component you will hit this that votes API because this these APIs are server side components they will do the create vote through the Prisma client okay so what are concepts you can think of we are doing here and then there is going to be another page inside this is the result page uh, there is a lot of watch watch here so we will have a result page inside app directory and that also going to have all these things inside this let me just move things upside down okay this is a result page is also going to have all these things and inside result page because we are going to fetch the results of whatever the voting results so here also we are going to access prisma client to give me the data so from what all places we are accessing prisma client we are accessing prisma client from the server components only these all are server components from this page.tsx from these components we are just making direct access to the prisma client okay give me all the pokemons and here for the result route inside the page directory give me all the pokemon results okay but when you want to vote we have, have created a client component which is using react context and uh, there is some function and i wanted to access i wanted to vote a pokemon and this is the client side component we cannot access prisma client so we will use this uh, next js apis page based apis and we will expose one endpoint so that this client component can directly access these apis from here to here and this votes already have an access to the prisma client they will create a vote and then there is a result page which will be able to show us all the votes so what all concepts we are touching here first of all client side state management through the context creating the layouts creating all these uh, loading state error state and page components i mean all the app directory structure uh, component based on the directory and then how we are writing the api routes in the next js 13 how we are creating a server components and fetching the data through the prisma clients here we are going to talk about the prisma table generations uh, through the prisma schema so some prisma client uh, we are going to use so a lot of concepts will be here in this showcase which will cover most of the concepts which we were talking in the previous couple of videos so let's do the setup of the prisma for the prisma we need a postgres container postgres container running the database on some port so what we are doing we are using docker compose yml file so we do docker compose up that should be able to create us this pokemon app and pokemon app testing these are the two database we need only one pokemon app and we are going to create a couple of tables inside it using prisma migration so after that we will do docker compose up that will create the containers for us and then the next thing is writing the prisma schema file okay so because we are using prisma and which uses the prisma orm and the advantage of prisma is actually it creates the prisma client looking at your schema file when you do npm install pnpm install it looks you at your prisma schema file inside a prisma folder if you and you also need to have a dependency installed prisma client and a prisma so we will create a prisma folder and inside that we will create a schema file so that schema file will give all the details about the provider about the client configurations about uh, what is the database uh, connection you are using postgres mongodb mysql and then the model names what all tables you have and what kind of relationship you are defining so it's like a one single schema configuration file that contains your lot of information about the the prisma client uh, data source url what is the database url you are going to connect to and then the models models let's say we are going to have two models here one is pokemon and another is a vote model because what we are going to show two pokemons randomly once you click on vote button we are going to create a vote for that pokemon and then we are going to store the vote in the vote table and then there is another route results there we are going to show all the results so data source if you look at the prisma schema schema.prisma file the, there are multiple samples available 
this is how we define it we provide pass the provider postgresql and we pass the the url which is uh, which it is going to get from the data uh, process.env so we need to have a dot env file contains a database url as a attribute and that should have a your data source url and then we will define the models we have vote model and the pokemon model so model vote and there is another model we are going to define is a model pokemon so model vote will have a foreign key of the pokemon id because there are many pokemons available in the pokemon table which we are going to seed and you you can individually vote for a particular pokemon and that vote we are going to store inside this table and you can vote multiple times for a particular pokemon which are being randomly generated shown on the ui the image of the pokemon so these are the the two models we have id and so the attributes of vote is id created at and the vote id is a foreign key and then there is a pokemon pokemon has again a couple of columns like name picture url and uh, some property we have to switch to a node version 16.18.0 these are the prisma script npm run migrate npm run generate npm run uh, so whenever we do npm run generate what it will do is it will look for this uh, prisma schema and it will try to create these tables in our database so this is our prisma schema before that we need to have a prisma client available in the node modules that always happens whenever you do npm install or pnpm install so here when i'm doing npm run migrate i'm getting error code that means my configuration doesn't look good what i will do is i will check it if the provider name is correct post grease sql okay earlier it was a double s there was some typo now we will do the execute the same command again npm install and it has created this postgres uh, sorry prisma client inside node modules we can also see this inside a prisma there is a client and this client has all the defined methods inside it inside this uh, index.d.ts okay so now next thing we are going to do is we will so we will seed the database i mean we already have a seed file inside lib we are going to seed the content this is a prisma client which gets generated using npm install command and then uh, npm run migrate what it will do is it will look for this migrate command prisma migration dev and you just put the migration name okay baseline tables or the table name because it will look for the prisma schema it will check of those models are there in the database it will check the existing prisma migration and then it will create those tables and create a migration for you also like votes and pokemon sequels are generated in the migration sequel and th th these are the models which are defined in the schema dot prisma those has been created inside our postgres table now we have both the tables ready now we can start writing our code we can access these models using db dot votes db dot pokemon because these are the model names using which we will access the queries on the in the database so we have this seed.ts file which contains some code what it is doing is it is looking for this url and it is getting data and that data we are trying to insert into the using prisma we are inserting into the pokemon table it's like a the bulk of pokemon information the pokemon name id and some features and we are trying to insert that inside a table so what it is doing it is using fetch so we will replace it with axios npm install minus minus save axios and then we will use axios to fetch the data instead of fetch because we are going to run this, this through the node.js and fetch is not available obviously so axios dot get and then we are just going to get response dot data here instead of this whole we can just do the response dot data and we'll replace await because await we are already doing that line 10 now we can just do npm run seed what it will do is it will first it is converting this typescript file into dot js tsc libc.ts and then node libc.js because we cannot run typescript through this node command so first we are compiling it and then we are generating a seed data then it is doing insert into pokemons and ids uh, split url and the name 
this is what the data we are inserting okay so after this what is the next step next step is we can just now the prisma setup is kind of done uh, here we are uh, just executing these queries and we have inserted a lot of data inside the pokemon table this these are the two tables has been generated by using npm run migrate command which is just looking at your prisma schema and has created these two tables inside it now next important part is let's start creating the routes components all the things inside our application so you can see it is using the db db command db dot pokemon dot create many insert many update many find first all these utility are available using prisma client here in the seed also we are using prisma client to insert many records it's like a bulk insert and this is coming from prisma client you can see node modules prisma and then the client there is index dot g dot ts that is providing all the definitions so till now we are good now uh, we have the tables we have the data we just need to fetch the two random pokemons and then we need to vote for one of the pokemon and store the vote inside the so now let's create uh, our components so the components are similar head.tsx layout.tsx page.tsx error.tsx i mean based on what you are what is your need but these are few components you will write page.tsx layout and error layout is defining the root layout of the component inside app directory page.tsx is something when you click on forward slash localhost 3000 what is the landing page that will be rendered from uh, app page.ts and inside that we also have a result route and now inside our app component so what are the other folders we can create the components components can be client side or a server side because whatever the root components we can put inside app directory rest we can put inside a component folder outside app directory and we will also write uh, endpoints that we will create inside a pages so and also we are going to manage some state inside a context so we'll create a context components lib utility helpers whatever the folders you wanted to create you can just create them so inside pages we are going to have a api because this is like a rest api we are going to expose which is like when from the client side components you wanted to hit we wanted to record the vote of a pokemon then from a client side component i'm going to hit this api to record a vote for pokemon so i'm exposing these page based apis inside vote id.tsx id.ts here we will define our uh, route handler which is a, which is going to handle the post api and uh, let's start uh, populating these components inside app we are going to have a loading.tsx error.tsx these are the basic components we will create and here we will put our uh, components like uh, we can create this is going to be a server component inside page.tsx and inside a result all are server based component because here i need to fetch two pokemons and i do have an access to prisma prisma client to so by accessing the prisma client I can fetch the data from the Prisma by just passing the random two, two random IDs of Pokemons which are already seeded in the database. So this is like a main page here we can have a header, footer and the compare box. So let's start creating all the components. This is the head component we have to just populate the, the meta information and then this is the layout. We are creating a root layout. So this root layout will take a children as an input and then we will render the children inside our component. It can be, we will just, why we need a layouts? Layouts to pre-populate the header and footer as a header footer component and then render the children. Children is of type react.react .react node. So here in this uh, component of layout, you will have a HTML head and body inside body with some class. You will render the children's. So this is like a root layout. There may be multiple layouts in your application and multiple layouts per directory be bound based on the directory also that is possible so here we are putting container class and then rendering the children so this is the root layout similarly we will have a loading which is nothing but a simple loading state you can populate and render okay its content is loading okay and the, the main part here is 
putting the content inside a page.tsx because that is going to be published when we hit a forward slash. So here we have three components, header, footer and com compare box. Compare box is asynchronous component. It will be asynchronous component because what we are going to do inside a compare box is fetching two Pokemon information asynchronously and render it. So here we are going to do get random Pokemons. First of all, get random IDs, get two random numeric IDs and then call the uh, Prisma clients to fetch two random Pokemons. Here get random IDs, I think we already have defined. Inside a lib, we will use that method get random IDs and we will import it which is going to give us two numeric uh, random IDs and then first and second and now we can just call these uh, Prisma methods like const first Pokemon equal to away db dot uh, Pokemon dot find first we need to import the database db is actually a Prisma client which is inside a lib Prisma client app lib uh, db and then we can just use db dot pokemon dot find first based on the id find first and then there is a where close where id equal to the first id similarly we can get the second pokemon and return both these pokemon objects from this get pokemon function that is async function so we have to make our component also async to get this data so inside a compare box, we will fetch the data const first Pokemon, second Pokemon equal to await, uh, get Pokemon information. So we'll get uh, both the Pokemon's data and this is now asynchronous component. So we got the first, uh, first Pokemon and second component. If any of them is null, that means we cannot do the really comparison. We will return null from this route. Otherwise, we got both the Pokemons, we can pass them to two separate components like a compare box component or let's say the vote box components. So we are going to create a, another component vote box inside that we will pass it. Before that we are also going to create a context. Context uh, is just to showcase some of the client based stuff like uh, using the hooks or using the Redux uh, context APIs to store the, the data like we need to see we need to first of all store we need to uh, do the vote for a particular pokemon right so what we are going to do is we are going to create a simple context that will expose this handle vote method to the consumer components so here we are going to create a provider here this context will have a two things handle vote and loading property overloading property if there is any global state you can put in the context context is the part of react here we are creating what context equal to react context and the type of this context is of what context type this is just a type script thing and then we will just create a simple context component provider component vote context provider and here we will write a handle vote method and we will expose the is loading property from here this is of type uh, vote context react node okay react dot react node or react simply react node and then what we are going to do is what this context is providing this context is providing as these method handle vote and is loading property so we will return vote context dot provider and inside that we will render the children this is like simple react i'm not talking something something new in the next 13 this is how we write a context with the typescript in react Vote context dot provider and we are rendering children and this provider is going to exp, exp, provider is going to provide these values handle vote and is loading property these two property this context is going to provide to the consumers wherever you want to consume it using use context hook in any child component so is loading and set is loading initialized with the youth state hook and then we have a async function handle vote which is taking vote id and it is going to trigger uh, an api endpoint which is provided by this next 13 page api endpoint so here first of all let's define the handle vote uh, it's async function so we can write a simple function async function handle vote 
which is taking uh, id which of type number and then what it is doing is it is going to send a post call to vote api endpoint so it is loading true and then it is going to use fetch api because this is client side stuff this is the client only component client side component fetch page api api votes and here we are passing the vote id so we need to define this method page api in this and then we can pass the method post so we will switch to the next js 13 i mean next 13 and there we are going to create this api inside a pages and once it is done then we will just set set loading to false so to create the page api we will go inside a pages votes id and here we can write a simple route handler so this is how here we are showcasing how you can write a page api export default async function handler and it is taking two argument request and response it is similar to what we write a handler inside express node.js request response through request we get access to the query variable path variable and then we just do response dot status dot send response dot status dot json this is what we do in simple express world so first of all get the id from the query parameter request dot query dot id as a string then just parse int it so we'll get the id and then we just insert it in the prisma database because this is server side and we have an access to prisma client so db dot away db dot uh, db dot votes dot create this is what we can do so import db from the lib db dot uh, votes dot create and we just pass the data inside the data we are passing the vote id okay and then if it is done successfully response.json response.status.json with some message or this vote id because vote id is pokemon id inside the votes we are storing the pokemon votes so we will just replace this with once it is running we will replace the page api with the local host 3000 api votes So now this is going to hit our page apis okay so this is done now we are exposing the handle vote and is loading property through this context now this context can be used wherever we want here we are getting handle vote and so this is what it is going to return pokemon.name pokemon.image and then there can be a simple rounded button we will add the styling also i'm not using css modules right now but uh, i will do it offline just putting the country putting the right styles using css modules and then put using those styles using class names here so i can do it with the uh, class uh, css modules or we can use the tailwind classes by introducing tailwind here or just write a vanilla styles and import those styles in the layouts so here we are just getting the information about Pokemon and then we will write uh, one simple button that will have a couple of things like disabled when the loading is already happening keep it disabled otherwise do a one click and call handle vote method from the vote box component because I am voting for this Pokemon and I am passing the ID and based on what is the loading property we can show so if it is already loading otherwise it is like okay vote for me click for vote okay so this is a simple example now what is the error here okay the problem here is the line number two we are importing create context from vm obviously this should be from react yeah let's fix this from react and everything is now working all the errors are gone now uh, what we have achieved we have created this vote box component now we will just import this vote box component everywhere and then uh, this vote box component compare box we are importing inside our page.tsx so because this is asynchronous component again we will also create a result pages result uh, inside that page.tsx and the layout.tsx layout is simple dummy layout uh, we can customize we can define just a totally a different layout for this here we want to have a header component already available and then inside body we will just render the children's 
so the layout is only about if you want to customize or show different behavior different ui then just create a new custom layout and choose your component like sidebar new bar header and footer and render your children's inside the page this is the result page inside this result page this is a uh, this is again a server component and asynchronous component because here we are going to fetch the data from the votes table using prisma client and then once we have a data we will show that table uh, data inside a tabular format so response await uh, get pokemon votes and get pokemon votes is a sync function that is going to use prisma client to query the data and here we are we just need a simple prisma client knowledge how do we query await prisma client first we will get the db reference and then db dot pokemon dot find many db dot uh, pokemon i guess pokemon dot find many and just pass the where close like based on uh, for what you're looking for because i'm going to fetch all the the results of the pokemon with their votes so let's say we have 20 pokemon so i will show all the 20 pokemons and then their respective vote count so we already have a relationship uh, of pokemon with the votes so we can have this underscore count new property which is going to be so this is like custom query what it is doing is give me the total count of individual pokemon stored inside a votes table and then once we have it we will just display the tabular format data okay these are the pokemon list with the pokemon name and uh, these are the pokemon votes so it's table and it's inside a tr we can just render all the tables and td response is going to be an array which is going to return us individual pokemon and then we can return individual row so row will have a td td will have a pokemon name and then a pokemon image and then uh, maybe the vote count these are the three different columns we are going to have inside this particular row so we'll just put a pokemon name name id and uh, maybe the count underscore count dot votes this will give me the numeric value here i can have the image also and whenever you are displaying image always use this next image module to render the image on the the next js pages so here source is pokemon dot uh, spirit url otherwise pokemon dot name and this image we are importing from the next image so our most of the components are ready the result page is ready and uh, this uh, the landing page where we are showing both the pokemons with the buttons handle vote which is going to create a vote and we have already created a page apis for recording the vote at the server side so this is a sync component we are going to wrap this async component inside a suspense block because what we want is let's say this is asynchronous things are happening if there is an error if if the data is being fetched then we can show the loading state using suspense api which is coming from react here we can just provide a fallback until this uh, compare box is getting rendered you can just show the fallback loading screen with some loading message So we'll mark all these components as a use client because these are the client components use client use client and then there is a compare box this is a server component because here we are doing the data fetching and passing the data to the child components and these components can be child uh, client side components but the data fetching task is happening inside our server components so let's see the the demo now like uh, how all these pieces really works together i'm going to style this a little bit by using css modules or tailwind and then we will see the final output how it looks like from the overall code so this is how it looks like these are our components this is the landing page i just added a ts ignore to hide the warning compare box this is a synchronous component and it is using uh, these two vote box component inside a context provider and it is fetching the data from the prisma and this is our vote box component which is making the the vote to the pgpi uh, pgpi endpoint 
when it is once it is done it is refreshing the url so it can refresh and fetch two more random pokemons and then the, we can do vote again because once after you click on vote we need to refresh and show two more pokemon so we can just render this component using next.js router router.refresh and this is our result page fetching the data and showing it so what i did is i just added some class names i'm just using these classes using style modules.css and then importing these modules and then using style.class name so this i did background i already put copied them from my snippets because I don't want to invest more time in writing the styles, which you can do better than me. And uh, what we are doing now is just uh, let's take a look on simple demo, what all components and how they are working. Like uh, we have server components, client component. This is our data and this is how it really looks like. When you reload, we got the two random Pokemons. Keep reloading it. It will just keep putting something for us. Then you can just create a vote. This vote is getting registered uh, through the API. Page API is storing this vote inside a uh, using post uh, using Prisma client. This vote is getting stored inside our table, and then there is a result endpoint which is just reading the Pokemon and its relationship with the votes table. So if let's say the Pokemon has been is present ten times in the votes table, that means it got ten votes. So this is pretty much about the demo. This is pretty much about the demo. This application is uh, i will add the reference also for this application like you can explore these references and can talk about it i have already used prisma a lot many times so i like this approach of uh, using prisma client and just directly accessing the database using server based components using prisma client we are using in the server components and accessing the data reading and writing it and then using these page based apis which can be consumed by the client side components and then you can either use Redux, you can use the context APIs and these basic hooks to update and mutate the state inside a local components.